What up everyone? So, new setting. I uh, just moved house and I haven't really done a video in a while, but um, this one I think is gonna be a bit more geared towards, you know, uh, going back to my roots in terms of building acquisition systems and things like that, uh, more so than displaying the data of what inside. So I came across this video uh, by Joel Kaplan. If you guys don't know who Joel Kaplan is, he's, he's pretty cool. Essentially, he like runs a, a thing called like an, you know, a, an agency program helping people to grow their agent. And he's got a ton of cool videos and so forth. I went through this, this video here and it says I started an SMA from scratch to see how it works. Basically, he goes through and he helps his kid who is doing a UGC offer. So he's doing like user generated content. He's helping people do that and he's helping him build an offer from scratch. So I wanted to record this video because I wanted to do a side by side comparison of how Joel basically would build a uh, agency offer from scratch and how I would do it using DAS, which is data as a service type business model, right? If you guys don't already know, we leverage data in marketing to be able to create really, really good offers for agents. So this is the video here. Now, I think the big thing I want to pay attention to is talking about basically, you know, he built the guy's offer and uh, the biggest thing I think, and this is not just Joel, but a lot of agency programs is like, all right, so you want to focus on one being heavy in your numbers. So like, how can you make sure that, so, you know, this guy's talking about how many D, like they talk about how many DMs he's have to send per day in order to land the ideal client. Uh, and then he's talking about his best offer and everything like that, right? And, and the big thing I want to really break down and compare is this idea of building an offer Offer, right? Uh, Joel and many other coaches, they use this strategy where it's like, you want to have a big promise, you want to have the mechanism, you want to have a risk reversal, and then you want to have value, right? And that's how they kind of build out their offer. So if you can see here, uh, basically how they positioned his offer is they were like, hey, instead of you saying that you do UGC, which is user generating content for everybody, you're going to say, I'm able to generate five deals per month using a hybrid of content ads that no one else is doing, right? So it's kind of just like brushing it up, making it sound really cool, things like that. So that's essentially the strategy built out there. I wanted to take that same use case. So let's assume, you know, this same guy, so this video, he says his name in the video. This same guy, I wanted to take that and apply that to our methodology of how we would scale an agency, right? And this is how we would do it. So if you guys don't already know, we have a uh, kind of an ebook out there called Trojan Horse Offers. Uh, and essentially it tells you how to build a Trojan Horse offer. Now I have a video that's on this channel specifically about that. And what's really cool is it talks about the science behind a Trojan Horse offer. Anyway, you can look at that, the link's in the comments and I'll link this in the comments as well. But um, the first thing I want to do is I want to go through and I want to apply this model to this same guy, right? So essentially his offer is he is doing UGC for real estate agents, right? The first kind of gripe I would have with this is UGC. Man, everybody does UGC. A lot of people I see are just jumping shifts like whatever the trend is and it's not solving an actual, it's it's kind of a nice to have, but it's, it's not causing corporate. I'll show you what that means in a second. So we'll go into that. So the model we use when we're scaling out agency offers is what's called a Trojan horse offer. Now, the concept behind this is that you have two types of offers. You've got one, which is Poodle offer, right? Now, Poodle offer is something like coaching. UGC could be that. It's it's anything where it's like, it's going to be harder to get it with cold email. It's like, you have to get on a call to explain the value. Say for an example, if you're doing a cold email campaign for a coaching offer, that's a Poodle offer. It's going to be very hard to just get it across the line because it's not designed for cold traffic. The next offer you have is what's called a Bulldog offer. Now, a Bulldog offer is essentially an offer which you design for cold traffic. So essentially when you're entering paid ads or doing anything with cold traffic is something that you've never met before. You need to be able to have a bulldog offer. Traffic, paid ads, cold traffic is like a dog fight. So if you have a poodle offer, you need to reverse engineer that into a bulldog offer. We also call this a Trojan horse. It is something that is designed to be able to get in as quickly as possible, like kick down doors of big businesses, and then you can unload more value and uh, get at least a six or 12 month contract from the deal. All right, so that's how we're gonna do this. Let's go through how to build a Trojan Horse offer using this same model, right? We're talking UGC for real estate agents. I want to change that. I want to do something else for real estate agents and solve a bigger problem. So I went through and I did this in my own time and I'm going to run you through this. To create a Trojan Horse offer, you need a few things and I'll show what this looks like inside a nice little Venn diagram here. You need corporate angst, risk first reward, a feedback loop, it's performance driven and you need to novelty chunk, okay? Those are the things you need, the five elements of a Trojan Horse offer. If you don't have those five things, it's not going to work. So let me jump back into here and show you what each one of these means. So corporate angst. This is probably the most overlooked thing that people don't really pay attention to. Uh, if you're watching this, you've probably seen Alex Hamozzi's videos and uh, read the book, $100 million offers. And this, this phrase where it's like, offer has to be so good that a prospect feels stupid saying no. Now, the thing is, feeling stupid is not enough. That's why you need to have what's called corporate angst. So if you're going to go after big companies, like which you should, you know, like if you're looking to make as much money as possible by working with as 
few clients as possible, you need to go for companies that can afford it. And if you want to go for these companies, you need to understand corporate angst. And corporate angst is essentially causing some type of negative benefit, uh, negative outcome if they don't work with you in the corporate ecosystem. So what I like to look at is the first thing I like to look at is how can I create corporate angst? There's a few ways to do this. So first of all, we want to look at an existing expensive problem they are trying to directly or indirectly solve. Okay, so I say indirectly and directly because indirectly means they might be doing it the wrong way. Directly means that they're, they're trying to do exactly what you can solve. Now I can virtually guarantee that a lot of these real estate agents don't really care about just creating more content. They just want more leads, but they don't want more leads. They want more qualified leads. And what I want to do is instead of going after real estate agents that have don't have a mechanism or anything like that. I want to focus on real estate agents and real estate agencies that are already spending money on traffic. Okay, so the big expensive problem is more qualified leads and they're wasting ad spend. They don't want more leads, they want more qualified leads. Okay, so that's the expensive problem there. I look at who is in charge of solving it and is their job on the line. Okay, so I look at who is in charge of solving this expensive problem for these agencies. There may be a marketing coordinator inside uh, the real estate agency that may be the principal and he may just be a guy who has his own real estate company. It could even be the agency that is working with the real estate. Uh, businesses. So who is in charge? So I'm going to say the person whose job on the line is the real estate agent that is running the ads for the agency. And then how high is the sophistication level? Uh, in Joel's video, he mentioned UGC and I see a lot of people using UGC. And the thing is, it doesn't really have a high barrier of entry. So it doesn't have a high level of sophistication. Okay. The difference between say, you know, somebody that mows your lawn as opposed to a brain surgeon is actually equal amounts of effort. But the person that mows the lawn has a lower sophistication level than the person that does the brain surgery right? So it's about adding sophistication. So what can we do for this person that not everybody else can do? Now, I'm going to go to the data models that we have. If you look at our Trojan horse models, we actually have models that we've built out that use this same methodology of pre-made Trojan horse offers you can slap onto your agency to get deals coming through like no one's business. But what I would recommend here is we're looking to one, we're looking to stop wasted ad spend, and then we're looking to generate more qualified leads. My offer for this and so the problem that I would solve is by taking their existing traffic, matching it to anonymous, taking their existing traffic, which is anonymous, and then showing them who they are and then helping them close those leads. So I would go after real estate agents that are already running ads, okay, which is very easy to find. I would go after bigger companies and I'll look for people that are already getting traffic to the landing page and I'll help them just be able to match that up so they can get more out of it without spending any more money. That is solving a big problem because one, the person who's running the ads is going to look way better. Two, it's an expensive problem. They're wasting money every single month by missing out on those leads. And three, the sophistication level is pretty high. Not everybody can offer that. So that's what I'm going to go with my corporate angst the problem that I'm solving. Next, I need risk versus reward. Okay, so what are the risks and what are the rewards? If I'm looking at, let's say, paid ads and I wanted to, you know, offer paid ads to real estate agents, right? And I came up with a 30 offer guarantee, the 30 appointments and 30 days offer guarantee. The risk is that they have to put up ad spend. Unless I put up ad spend, but most usually like they'll put up the ad spend. That's a risk to them. Uh, let's say I'm doing, you know, conversion optimization on their page, on their landing page. The risk to them is I'm going to be messing around in their stuff and I could change something. So you need to look at how can I create the most minimal amount of risk possible with the highest amount of reward. So the risk is minimal for this. They just have to install a little pixel on their website and then it'll start tracking uh, the traffic. And then they just need to either provide access to a CRM or a spreadsheet. That's it, right? The risk is very minimal. Even if nothing happens and they don't get any results, they're not going to lose money or lose anything. So next I look at the feedback loop. Now this one is the most important one or one of the most important ones, I would say. And, and what a lot of people don't really think through. Uh, going back to Joel's video with that guy, he was talking about free trials okay so we're saying you can pilot our system for free and things like that now i like to think of it as pocs proof of concepts the difference between a proof of concept and a free trial is a free trial is pretty much saying hey jump on i'll show you it works and then you can keep going but it's very very hard to measure i'll give you an example let's say you are wanting to run facebook ads for a client and you give them a free trial so you have to set up the pixel you have to write the ad copy you have to set up everything in terms of the facebook ads you have to find the audience everything right so that's like probably three weeks of work depending on how fast you are could be a week uh, and then you know you get them started and then you know they could decide not to go with you that's what happens a lot that's why free trials don't really work so what you need to do is you need to find out how can you define instead of doing a free trial how can you do a POC which is a proof of concept when you're doing like larger enterprise deals proof of concept is the standard thing that happens I'll give you an example I was dealing with a very large data company the other day we were buying uh, some pretty amazing data sets and I said hey can we try this out they said we don't do trials 
but what we can do is a proof of concept where you can send us uh, a list that you want us to enrich and we can show you the match rate we have on our platform. Like that's a proof of concept. It's something that they have 100% control and uh, all the variables and it's something where it's very, very measured. So that's why I don't believe in free trials and I reckon you should do a proof of concept instead. So that's where the feedback loop comes in for the Trojan Horse offer. One, you need to get results as quickly as possible. Okay, so you need to think how can you break up a whole service down into what's going to get results as quickly as possible. In this case, you put a pixel on, you come back in 24 hours and you have leads. It doesn't really get faster. Than if you do SEO and things like that, you might crush it, but it takes three months to get results and they're going to be bored and you're not going to be able to close that deal. Okay, so it's got to be a quick feedback loop. Now, this doesn't mean you can only do services that are quick, but it means in the initial introduction, building the Trojan horse, it's going to be quick because then you can start unloading services in your performance driven upsells. Okay, so how can you get results tomorrow? Add the pixel, wait for eight hours and show them the leads. How will you measure results? Okay, like maybe leads is enough. Maybe they want to, you know, they might be like, okay, well, let's see if these leads are good. We'll send an email and see how that works. Okay, but what variables do they control and what variables do you control? Because maybe they want to use their messaging, their messaging, or maybe, you know, they want to upload it into a Facebook ad and they haven't tested their ads. Okay, so what you need to do is you think, how can I control this as much as possible uh, and control all the variables so that it is only, it's a true test to be able to see if the thing's legit, right? It is a proof of concept, right? A proof of concept isn't necessarily going to be like, hey, I'm going to get you a massive ROI in a week of working together. Proof of concept has to be very, very clear expectations set and it needs to be something that you have control of all the variables. So I would just be like, all right, so I'll get you the match rate desired. And then what you can do is you can run the leads to a verification tool of your choice, thousand emails, and you can see how you know legit they are in verified. And then if that's good, we'll proceed. And then you build that into a contract. So what variables do they control? You know, if we're doing ads and things, they control the ads, creative and messaging. For us, you know, we control the data uh, and we control the pixel, okay? So if we're just showing them the quality of the data in this particular POC, that's all that matters. So next is the performance-driven upsell, all right? So this is the next piece. The performance-driven upsell is a essentially what's inside the Trojan horse. So we have pre-made Trojan horses as said that we usually apply to offers. You can build your own. Basically, you're just gonna have these things to have a Trojan horse offer. It is like a battering ram designed to kick down doors. So what I would look at is be like, all right, how can I add a performance-based incentive to this? So I'm putting the pixel on, I'm getting leads matched up using the pixel. What I wanna then do is they're gonna need those leads contacted. So I'm gonna charge a $2,000 a month fee to handle the email reactivation, or I'm gonna charge a cost per lead that opts in, right? So Immediately, I'm taking something where it's like start off with a POC, but then I'm adding a performance-based incentive into it and then I can build that into the service. Next, this one is called novelty chunking. Now, what's really interesting about Joel's video is if you look here, basically it's talking about making things sound a lot cooler. So instead of saying, hey, I can do UGC, he's saying, I have a hybrid method that no one else has to generate you five deals per month. This may work to an unsophisticated market and that's small businesses and those are people that won't be able to afford to pay a lot of money. When we're talking about bigger businesses, this doesn't really work. You need to use something called novelty chunking. Now, novelty chunking is something that was first coined by a guy called Oren Claff. He has a book called Pitch Anything. It's an amazing book. I highly recommend you get it. And basically what it is, is big businesses right? So businesses that can afford your services that have, you know, more than a few staff. Essentially, people are trying to do less work for more money and they're not wanting more work. So when you come in with something that is so foreign and something that is so, you know, new, it can actually work against you by being too innovative because they just translate that to be more work. A great example that Oren Claff actually explains is imagine trying to pitch a new business, Google Sheets or Google Docs for the first time ever, right? Imagine going to a business that has been doing the same thing for 10 years and saying, hey, what we'll do is we'll take all your information, put it into this proprietary cloud, and then you'll be able to access everything on any device, anywhere, without having to use a dock. That would just blow their minds. They would be so creeped out by it, they probably wouldn't do it. Or it could translate to more work, because they're like, well, now what do we have to do? We have to get, you know, somebody to set this up, all this stuff. So what usually happens is when people try sound too technical, or they try, you know, do something which is like too innovative and out there, it actually works against them because it just translates to more work. So what you need to do is you need to novelty chunk it. So novelty chunking is essentially taking something they're very familiar with and then associating the new thing as an upgraded version of that. Okay, so it's basically what you want to do novelty chunk is you want to make it sound as grandiose and amazing as possible and then taper it down to make it more vanilla so that it's 
related to something they're associated with. So, great example, Google Docs. Imagine explaining Google Docs to a business for the first time. They've never heard of it. They have all these important documents. Instead of saying, it's like this thing that lives in the cloud, you can access the information anywhere using proprietary technology, blah, blah, blah. You would just say, it's like Microsoft Word, but it's online, you know? Like that's that's how you'd explain it. It's basically like what you're doing in Microsoft Word now, but you don't have to keep it on the computer. It's gonna be online. So you can, you know, you can share the documents. So it's like Microsoft Word that you can share online, right? That's just gonna be so much easier for these businesses, particularly the big ones. So you think, how can we novelty chunk this offer? We're not gonna go out and we're gonna say, hey, we have a proprietary identity resolution system that will take anonymous traffic and match it here. That's just gonna translate to more work and flag, right? We wanna take something that we're very familiar with. We wanna match that with our solution. So how I would novelty chunk this down is I would compare it to Facebook ad retargeting because they would know what that is, except we get their email as well. So it's like basic retargeting, but we get their email. It's the, the people that didn't opt in your site were able to get their email instead of just retargeting them. So that's how I would build out this offer. This is a Trojan horse offer. This one will absolutely crush. And if uh, that kid's watching, I will license it to him for free just so he can see how it works if you're watching this. So to recap, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on real estate companies that are wasting money on paid ads. There's a lot of ways we can find those companies. I can show that in another video. We can actually use Audience Lab to do that, which is what we do inside of our data as a service program. We're going to use identity resolution to match up their anonymous traffic to match leads, right? So basically we can put it on the next day, we can show them results. And then we're going to upsell them to a $2,000 a month management service using maybe high level or managing the email list so that we can convert those leads in to more opt-ins. And then we can upsell them again and actually start running their ads. So it starts off as a Trojan horse, basically focusing on something that is very, very uh, expensive, high sophistication. You're getting in there and then basically you're opening up all these other services. Before we know it, we will have a few real estate companies that we just run everything from data to ads to email to absolutely everything else. So the big question is how do you take all this and turn it into a fancy one-liner that you can put into a cold email? That's probably what everybody's thinking. So I've done that. And uh, if you're watching this, you're welcome to actually copy and paste this, send it in the cold email and let me know the results. Uh, this is based on an email template that works every single time uh, because it just uses the fundamentals, right? The perfect cold email needs to just have a one-liner, which is basically like a, a knowledge gap or what we call a success message, right? If uh, success is basically from this book called Made to Stick and it's just simple, unexpected, credible, concrete, emotional stories. So how we did very specific thing in this time I'm doing this, something like that. Right, so this is an example. Basically, you just have your one-liner. Reason for reaching out is I would like to discuss taking resisting traffic you get each day and not opted in and convert it into qualified leads, right? I would even throw in Facebook ads there. So like where I can assist in taking resisting anonymous traffic, you know, you might get from running ads. But that's my one-liner. And then I just need a specific case study, right? So if you're doing, we have a program where we're actually licensing our case studies for people. We have like dozens and dozens of case studies, which are really, really cool. But for example, you just be like, recently, I worked with an agent in City who had an average conversion rate of three to five percent. Using this, we converted roughly twenty-five percent of the ninety-five percent of visitors who did not opt in back into customer. The clients was ecstatic uh, with a two times conversion rate. Right, that would hit. That would work really well. And then it's just a very clear CTA. Would love to set this up for your company and the products you have running. And then you give two times. Don't do the whole like BS like reply yes if this works because you don't have to send this to thousands of people. You only need to send this to maybe like hundred people a day. You don't have to do fucking like, hundred thousand emails when you're doing something like this. You say, can you possibly chat Tuesday at 3 p.m. or Thursday at 3 p.m.? You send this out and you're going to absolutely dominate using it, okay? So that is how we would do it. It's up to you to decide the difference. If, you know, you're curious, maybe try both, try both emails. But this is basically about how you would build an offer in 2023 using the Trojan Horse framework, which I'm biased, but I always stand by it because I've seen the results that it gets. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, this is how you build a Trojan Horse offer.